What's good with YouTube? Y'all already know, Big Flocker with the convict's perspective, and I'm smashing, dashing, sliding on through with a little bit of energy, man. I ain't been feeling good for about a week, guys, but I'm doing the best I can to at least drop one video a day. So please hit the bell notification, hit the like button, comment, do all those things to help support your boy, man. And we have another one in regard to the Aryan Brotherhood. This indictment that came out, man, a few years ago, man, that's still going to trial, man. There's been so much fucking surprises that keep on coming out that the AB was well tapped in, man. Okay. A Los Angeles man who worked at a company that shipped packages to California prisoners has been sentenced to 10 years and 10 months for using his job to ship drugs, hacksaw blades, cell phones, and fucking they had like uh, uh, tools, electronics. Uh, screwdrivers, all kinds of stuff, man, to Aryan Brotherhood members in, on the inside. Now, they say he was plugged into both ABs in High Desert as well as in New Folsom. Justin Perry was sentenced Monday by U.S. District Judge Kimberly Miller, who has also ordered Petty to undergo five years of supervised release after his prison time. Petty pleaded guilty in February to conspiring to distribute methamphetamine and heroin. So you've had an attorney, a paralegal, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a cop somewhere along the lines that's going to get indicted in this. I wouldn't be surprised, man. But prosecutors say that in 2016, Pitty concealed drugs, lighters, grinding stones, cell phones, screwdrivers, and electronics inside seemingly legitimate commissary package containing fudge brownies and oatmeal cream pies. Authorities later learned Petty was working with Aryan Brotherhood members in high desert and Sacramento prisons, just like I told you guys. Now, these crimes, right, were discovered in part thanks to a wiretap operation aimed at the Aryan Brotherhood leadership. The results of the wiretap came in 2019 when two dozen Aryan Brotherhood members and associates, including Petty, were charged with racketeering and other serious offenses. Unlike Petty, who faced only drug conspiracy charges, several of the defendants faced multiple murder conspiracy counts, making them eligible for death sentences. The federal prosecutors still haven't decided whether to pursue the death penalty. Now, this all comes from a free staff that was offered a certain amount of money if she could bring in cell phones. She turned around. I think it was a she. I think it was a female. She turned around and got at SSU, which is IGI, Institutional Gang Investigators. They gave her the phones with fucking wiretaps. And so they wiretapped all this stuff that, that happened. This is, a, this is like the main basis for their case is this. And then later on, several individuals have turned actually, you know, um, federal evidence. So this is like I said, man, this case has been fucking off the hook from the get go. Everything has been tied together from the stuff that happened from the Fresnex to, uh, you know, the murder of, a, a you know, uh, Yogi to actually hits on the streets, man. All this shit has somehow intertwined within the AB leadership that they're trying to point directions towards them as being the shot callers or being the main influencers. I'm kind of curious what these wiretaps have came off the phone because if you have a phone, you're gonna stop, you're gonna talk a lot freely, man. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in the evidence that the federal prosecutors have. Now the next part is kind of interesting. They added that while he was incarcerated at Nevada County Jail, Petty was transferred as, as a co-defendant found evidence Sacramento Jail staff were illegally recording attorney-client visits in the Sacramento Jail. Petty completed 72 courses of education and 35 certifications. So basically he was doing what he had to do while he's been in there to prove to the courts that he is a redeemable member to society. Now, what I find kind of interesting in this whole case is the Sacramento Jail were illegally recording attorney-client visits in the Sacramento County Jail. That's a serious violation, right? That right there could get several people's cases thrown out, from my understanding. Um, that's going to be another uphill court battle that the federal prosecutors are going to have to deal with, man. This is the first time I've actually heard that. There was a lot of things to this case, like I said, a couple, like about a month ago or a couple weeks ago, that just weren't making sense. And now it's making sense. It, it, Maybe the reasons why they're not publicizing all the crazy shit that's going on revolving around this case in the social media or in the news is because there may be a lot of loopholes to this case, man. I think the incident within the Sacramento County Jail of being able to record attorney and client's conversations is a big fucking issue right there, number one. Number two, 
There's also claims about what was going on in New Folsom a few years ago with officers staging, even running practice runs for certain removals of individuals that staff didn't like as well and other groups didn't didn't like as well. It's kind of like, a, you know, we both have the same enemy. Let's work on getting this dude dealt with. Now, those were raised by one another AB member that's in this involved in this case. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how everything plays out. There's been a lot of people who've taken deals. Some have taken deals uh, based upon cooperating. Some have just taken deals because of the minimal role that they played. But there's a lot more uh, details to this indictment than people realize. There's a lot. There's about what? Shit. Six, six. I don't know how many murders, a bunch of murders, a bunch of attempted murders, a bunch of drug, drug trafficking. Stuff going out of state. I mean, this fucking case is a lot bigger than people realize, man. Now, like I'm saying, alleged. This is all allegations. You know what I mean? But there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of legal work going ahead to see how this case proceeds. Because, like, I don't know how you're going to get get around the issue that you guys were rec- that they were recording people's uh, uh, lawyer visits. I mean, that's a big no no, man. I mean, that could get your case thrown out. You know, they were having the same problem, I think, in uh, Santa Cruz County a few, shit, about a few decades ago. And um, that was one of the main issues that was being pushed. And I remember that they had to make certain uh, changes to the uh, visiting over there and the recordings to make sure that their conversations weren't being recorded. Now, at the end of the day, this is a, like I said, this is a prize if you're an inmate, is to have someone that's, um, works for a vendor that can put things in your packages to go out. I'm not saying that this is what he did, but this is the allegations that he's already uh, pled guilty to. And this is how, like I said, cell phones, weapons, uh, drugs, you know, were able to come through. You also have that case with the lawyer that, that's indicted on this case that was bringing drugs in. And then the paralegal who somehow was associated, you know what I'm saying, with someone that was a uh, I think they were skinhead or, or, or I don't know. They could have been a brand member, right? I forgot how she felt forced. And it seems like certain people who um, are basically regular citizens that the ABS pretty much came forth so that they did not know what they were doing or this and that. I know that happened during the visiting one. Um, with this one, I, I this is all news to me, man. Like I said, every time I turn around, there's a new – added indictment someone that's either uh, you know taking a deal or someone that's being indicted and it's weird how they fucking kept everything quiet when these recent indictments came out and they didn't put out the names of the victims but through uh, proper research it was able to reveal who those alleged victims were it's kind of messed up how regular citizens who have no gang affiliations got caught up in this case some of them maybe had a relative or you know a boyfriend or a husband and yet they did what they thought they could do and pretty much got exposed, man. And those cell phones had a big power play in that, man, that they were able to re- basically record all the conversations that were going on to the build up these indictments. And I think once they realized that there was a few murders that had transpired off the wiretaps that they had, I think that's when they decided to close the case a little bit earlier because the feds will try to spread it out for as long as they can and get as much information to get a rock solid case. Then they're going to start hitting all the, the alleged uh, suspects that are being charged and seeing who wants to cooperate. And it's been a long process. You know, um, there's been a few that have, have cooperated, but there's a lot that are still holding strong because they feel that this is a, a weak case. Even though there's these are some big allegations and they have a lot of the proof. I think the one thing that they have is, is uh, you know, the, the cell phones was a big issue. You know what I'm saying? Can they legally do that? Uh, you know, I've heard mixed feelings about that. I think that they can legally do it because they're uh, they're an inmate. They're not supposed to have it. It's contraband, right? Because usually you would think that would be kind of like an entrapment, right? Did they have the judge? Uh, uh, I don't know if a judge signed off on a warrant for them to wiretap those. I don't know. But see, that's where it becomes a, a basically a burden of proof because you have the CDCR who has its own rules that can do what they do. Then you have the federal federal laws, right? And that's where it kind of gets a little bit messy, I think, man. 
because technically the IGI, they can S, SSU, whatever you want to call them, can pretty much do what they want because it's all within an institutional security. Therefore, this is contraband. Therefore, they can sit there and bait and hook people like they did. Anyways, just my thoughts and views. Um, hopefully next week I'm feeling a lot better. I've been feeling like shit, man, guys. Pretty bad. That's why I've been dropping as much content, man. But I hope you guys appreciate the efforts I do make, man. With that said, I'm gone.